Welcome, welcome to another session of Everyday Mathematics. Here at Everyday Mathematics, as we always say, we do enjoy solving the harder problems, but above all, we also do see and appreciate the beauty in the simpler problems. So uh, this video is on the MIT 2024 Integration B Finals. Uh, this tackles problem number two. Um, before we go ahead and tackle this problem, I'd like to thank our subscribers. Thank you so much for uh, showing and giving us your support. Uh, we don't take that for granted, and that's why we come back here time and again uh, to share with you our solutions to the problems. Now, um, for our first time visitors, what we do here at Everyday Mathematics is we do uh, go around, look for these seemingly harder problems, and we come back with the solutions uh, and share with you. For those of you who are here time and again and haven't uh, subscribed to our channel, we do really encourage you to consider subscribing to our channel. So um, this problem uh, is the integral uh, from x um, equals to 0 to x equals to infinity of a natural logarithm of uh, 2 uh, times e to the power x minus 1 over e to the power x minus 1. So this is a very uh, hard problem, um, but there are a number of tricks uh, that can be used. Uh, we will show you one of those uh, tricks. So um, the first thing that one would do is to let you be equal to um, the natural logarithm of uh, 2 times e to the power x minus 1. And so uh, e to the power u is equal to 2e to the power x minus 1, and therefore eu du dx is equal to uh, 2e to the power x. Uh, and so e to the power u over 2 to the power e over 2 times e to the power x du is equal to dx. And since we know 2e to the power x is the same as e to the power u plus 1. So therefore, e to the power u over e to the power u plus 1 um, du is equal to dx. And so when x is equal to uh, 0, uh, 2ex is equal to 2, and therefore uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, natural logarithm of 1 is 0. And when x tends to infinity, uh, u tends to infinity. So we have 0 and infinity unchanged. And therefore, in place of log, natural logarithm 2e the power x minus 1, we have u, and therefore in place of uh, e x, we have uh, e u plus 1 over 2 minus 1, and then we have e u over e u plus 1 du. So um, this uh, goes up here, so we have 2, and in the denominator now we have e u in place of uh, this e u minus 1 um, and so in the numerator uh, we have u remain and next here we have e u over e u plus 1 so uh, we have a product of these two numbers um, then So then the next thing is uh, we do now have um, our integral as shown here. Um, one thing that we could do is uh, obviously pull out u and e to the power u. And then now we have 1 over e um, u minus 1 minus 1 over e u plus one and then we pull out half because uh, if you combine this back together you get a two in the numerator so to cancel that two we have a two out here so the twos cancel out and so we're left with u and then if you divide both the numerator and denominator by e to the power u we have one over one minus e to the power u minus one over one plus e to the power negative u now, uh, what is very obvious here is that we do have a geometric progression that is really, really uh, standing out. Um, so these are geometric progressions to infinity with a common ratio, uh, e to the power negative u, and here negative e to the power negative u. Um, so um, we have our geometric progression here, as shown here. 
and uh, we can pull the negative 1 uh, to the power k here um, so that um, we do have our nice uh, expressions shown here. So the next thing we can do now is uh, combine uh, the constants. Um, so we have 1 minus negative 1 to the power k in bracket and then e to the power negative k the power u. So uh, we can now swap the summation sign and the integration sign. So we have inside the summation sign the integral from 0 to infinity of u times e to the power negative k u. So what happens eventually is that uh, we know that e to the power negative ku is the same as the derivative of 1 negative 1 over k times e to the power negative ku. So um, what we see here is that we can use integration by parts and uh, the integration by parts in essence means that you, when you have u, uh, capital U and dv, uh, the integration is uv minus the integral v u d u. So since this is our dv, uh, our uv is the same as u uh, times 1 over k e to the power negative k u negative uh, with the limits applied plus 1 over k times the integral of e to the power negative k u. So when k when uh, u tends to 0, um, let's begin with the upper limit, when k tends, when u tends to infinity, uh, this part tends to 0, so this entire thing goes to 0. When u tends to 0, this is 0, so this entire thing goes to 0. And so we are left with uh, the integral of 1 over k, I mean, times e to the power negative k u. And this is also the same as um, 1 over k um, times 1 over k um, negative uh, e to the power negative k u. Uh, and as you can see, when k when u tends to infinity, uh, this tends to 0, minus, minus, when q tends to 0, this tends to 1, so we have plus 1 over k that is left here. And so our integral becomes a summation of 1 minus negative 1 to the power k uh, times um, 1 over k squared. And that means that when k is uh, even, when k is even, uh, this becomes positive 1 and this becomes 0. When k is uh, odd, this becomes uh, negative 1 and this entire form becomes 2. So we are left with now what we see is 2 times 1 over 2k plus 1 squared. So only at odd uh, values of k is, or of the denominator, is when we have uh, this square taken into account. So um, that is that. Uh, we can pull two out, and then um, we're left with the summation of 1 over 2k plus 1 squared. So we can use the Bezel problem uh, to try and figure out what this summation amounts to. The Bezel problem uh, is if we have a summation of 1 over k squared that from 1 to infinity, uh, that adds up to uh, pi squared over 6. So what about the odd terms? So since the even plus the odd terms adds up to this, uh, these even terms can be reduced further by uh, squaring the twos uh, separately with the k and then pulling their quarter out. And so we realize that this is still the Bezel problem. So we have a quarter times uh, pi over 6, pi squared over 6, um, plus the summation of the odd terms is equal to the square of, of pi over 6. And so this is pi squared over 24 plus the odd terms uh, squared is equal to pi squared over 6. And so what the odd terms remains with is pi over six, pi squared over 6 minus pi squared over 24, um, which is 
uh, pi squared, uh, 3 pi squared over 24, uh, divide 3 numerator and denominator, we have pi squared over 8. So the all terms add up to pi squared over 8, uh, and the even terms uh, add up to pi squared over 24, right? So when we, we know that our uh, integral is twice the summation of the odd terms, uh, pi uh, 2k plus 1 squared, and so we plug uh, pi squared over 8 in place of this sum, and that means that your answer is pi squared over 4. And that is the answer that was provided in um, in, in, in the uh, answers for the integration B. Uh, thank you very much. Until next time, uh, à la prochaine fois, à tout à l'heure.